there's two deer bedded right over the hill, so I told my kids to practice stalking on deer. They did good, they got real close. They were definitely close enough to take a shot. Learning, little hunters. There's a couple, there was two farms down the hill, probably males. You were probably in a bachelor group. group. We have okay. the important job in the barn this morning that mama is sick today. She's not able to help me with. So I have my fill in for mama. Be able to do this. shot and since mommy's not feeling good I'm the replacement. So first we've got to get Lady out of the barn. The barn feels good today. Yeah. I think that water should be thawed. We gotta get Ladybug out of the barn and Luna in the barn. So <laughs> last night our uh, Yesterday, oh, yesterday the kids came out to do their animal chores and they told me that this was frozen. So sure enough, I walked over and it was frozen. It was halfway frozen. We can't get the water on, which is bad because we have really cold weather com coming and uh, not having this on means we have to haul buckets and I hate hauling buckets, it's no fun. So I put a heat lamp on it and some plug-in heat tape overnight and uh, we're gonna see if it worked. If it worked. Let's see. This is the moment of truth. I have yeah. no idea if this worked. But let's talk to it. Yes. It worked. We got our water working. Heat lamp and some heat tape. That's great. Keep it, keep it hooked on. Good just dinner. in case it happens again. One problem right. solved. One problem solved. And now we gotta give a cow a shot. But now we gotta give a cow a shot. You know the deal. I'm wearing a GoPro this morning so we can get some good video of giving the cow a shot uh, while I'm working with my daughter. So that's what this special contraption's for. It was really for bird hunting. For the footage. I didn't even check if my GoPro has a battery. Oh no, did I not? Sometimes you're in too much of a hurry. It's when mommy's exactly, sick, I'm all out of sorts. That's what I'll It's I'll exactly mean. what Daddy told to my brother. Don't rush bullshit. it. Would you be a deer? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna give it to you. One of those. Thank you, baby. I'll get started on the cows. Let's go get started on the cows.
got another one of those. What happened? Did our hose just rip? Our flexi hose just ripped. I don't know. It was underneath the gate, and there's a lot of sharp things under that gate. I wonder if it got pinched or something. Ah. Yeah, it probably got pinched, and then it, it was like clear. I didn't know how it got clear. All right, let's do this. Let's. Uh, I did get it on camera. Come here. That's great. Bring it here, honey. Here, our flexible hose. These are the self-draining hoses we've been using in the winter time. They are a lifesaver. I hate hauling buckets. These make life so much easier. This is the first broken one of the winter. They're about a $20 hose. If I have to go through two a winter, it will be worth it for me because I do not like hauling buckets. It makes me angry and not enjoy life on the farm. If I have to go through like six of them, I might reconsider. But uh, we have a second one. We're gonna pull that one out and uh, work with that one and see what happens, so. Bummer, I think it got caught on something sharp underneath the fence. Uh, I, maybe, well, you know how, when you leave it off for that long, it's okay. just me and Kay and the kids were little. Days like this were a lot harder where one of us was sick and the other had to cover all the work. Okay, this one's ready for Luna's water, hon. Develop Luna's water. Days like this where one of us was sick were a lot harder when the kids were little because it meant the other one had to do everything. And that's why we often suggest that as a homestead you don't operate at like what we refer to as maximum capacity. Hey, what are you doing? Jumping up. Ooh, somebody looks like she's ready to get bread. That's a good sign that she's coming in to eat here. Getting kind of crispy. Ah, uh, maybe she just wants to eat. She's looking for food. <laughs> when you operate every day on your homestead at maximum capacity, so that is something different for everyone, but for you it might mean if you have a full-time job, you wake up at 6 a.m. It takes you an hour to get ready for work and everything. So by 7 a.m. you are uh, ready to go. And then you have a half hour's worth of barn chores. You and your significant other combined. And then you head off to work and you have like no extra time in there. It's like you have that half hour together, the two of you, and then you're off to work. That's operating at maximum capacity. You have no room for error, no room for anyone to get sick. That's fine when both of you feel good and are loving life, but when a hose breaks on the same day that your wife is sick and you have to give shots to the calf that you know you normally do with her right next to you, uh, it turns a half hour morning worth of chores into a solid hour and change. Fortunately, the kids are here to help and the kids are really good with most things. They can't do everything. Like they can't come in with big stinky boy over here uh, because it's just not safe to keep kids with a big buck. Same with ladybug. We don't put the kids in with ladybug. It's just good general operating homestead advice. Don't be operating every day at, at maximum capacity because then when things go wrong, you get in trouble. Instead, we try to operate every day, you know, maybe 75%. Every day feeling like we could do a little bit more, we would enjoy doing a little bit more. And that's where you gotta just tell yourself, boy, I, I like what I'm doing every day. I could do this for another half hour, but I shouldn't because when something goes wrong, I will be doing it for an extra half hour. That's when it starts to get hard if you filled your cup too much. Here. What, baby? I'm All right, let's get some hay and feed for these goats. Uh, Mommy wants you to clean up the goat every day, or what she wants you to do here? Ah, we'll skip that today. We got enough going on. We got to get in. Now, some of you were thinking, Aust, just do your wife's stuff. You're a man. Be a man. Yeah, that's what we're doing. No, no problem. Doing my wife's chores this morning. Doing her side of the work. Sure. 
What you really got to think about is the flip side. I have a pregnant wife right now. What happens the day that I get sick and uh, she's the one out here doing the chores. So if I'm not that sick, I can come out and help. What if I break a leg? We've had that happen before where like I was on crutches and Kay had to do all the stuff. So it's just good advice. Never operate at full capacity. Never max yourself out. Always at the end of your morning chores on a regular day. Feel like you could do more. Wish you were doing a bit more. Maybe you're thinking, oh, I'd love to have another kind of animal on this farm or I'd like to have, uh, you know, grow twice as many egg layers or twice as many meat chickens. It's fun, it's great on the good days, but the days where you have bad weather, broken hoses, and a sick wife or husband or whatever it is, just make sure you can handle that. I've talked about this concept before. It's the Super Bowl flush. Big cities make sure that they're ready, that their sewer systems are designed for the halftime at the Super Bowl where everybody in that city gets up and uses the bathroom. On a regular day, in the middle of the day, there's not that much activity all at once. You gotta be ready for that Super Bowl halftime flush. That maximum capacity on your farm, it will change. Uh, back when it was just me and Kay doing this stuff, if Kay was down or I was down, it was only the other one to pick up the slack. Now we have two very capable farm kids who can help with a lot of the chores when the other one of us is down. We talked in last week's Q&A about how you incorporate young children in your homestead, toddlers, babies, how you involve them or what you do with them. I mentioned how at first young children, children period, are gonna slow you down on the homestead. As babies and toddlers, they're gonna slow you down a lot. Then from that like three to six year old age, they're still gonna slow you down because you're gonna be teaching them and anytime you're teaching someone to do something, it slows you down. But it's so worth it because then when you have seven and eight year olds who are extremely capable, know how to handle animals, how to work around livestock, if one of you is sick or needs a hand, my kids are at eight years old, seven years old, they're able to work with the smaller livestock, do all the watering and feeding chores. Meanwhile, I can do the chores that a man has to do. I can work around the goats and the larger livestock. They get to pick up the slack where maybe Kay would be doing other things. And now we're gonna go give Luna a shot and I have a seven year old daughter who knows how to work around a small cow. I wouldn't have her there with Ladybug. Uh, but she'll be able to just help me out getting the shot done. And uh, it's, it's one of the rewards of homesteading with kids when they reach this point where they're just these capable little farmers. Where are my capable little farmers? What do you think? You guys capable little farmers? Yeah. Could you run the place without mommy and daddy? Maybe. Maybe? Not wants like... to be capable too, look. Look at that capable pup. Come on, get him capable. in the show. He's so capable. Capable of getting birds. Shall we give a, a cow a shot now? Yeah. I think it's time. Let's go give a cow a shot. Or let's give the camera a shot. Oh no! Yeah. Okay, where's mommy's shot supplies? So this should be easier to figure out. It's not bad, I think it's gonna be in here. Let's see if in the first guess I get it right. Oh. Yep, it's right there. Looks like it goes medicine. in there. I saw some medicine in there. <sighs> yep, these look like syringes. Okay, now needle-wise, are they all the same? I think it's this one that we're using. Which of the needles are we using? Okay, got it. 
All right, I think we're good here. Hi, baby. Hi, bud. Going good. I gotta go. I gotta give a cow a shot. All right, we'll talk to you guys later. Talk to you later. Okay, bye. 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 You want to? Poppy's running around. You can head in. Yep. Okay, you sit back. Well, this, the, the needle popped right out of the syringe. I don't know if I prepare that. Kay always does this. This is a good example of one of those areas where Kay always does the needles and the prep, and then I do the shots. And I've never put this, I don't know if I put this together wrong, but sure enough, that needle popped right out of that syringe and uh, Oh man. But did you give her a shot? I did. I don't know what we got. I don't know what we got. I gotta see if Kendra I gotta see if Kay thinks we should redo that. Oh man. Goodness. Shots. Goodness. If you like our show, there's a really easy way you can support us in producing this show without spending a penny extra. If you're going to shop on Amazon, just click on this link right here to do so. 
or before you go to Amazon, type in amsteady.com. Every purchase you make supports our show without costing you a penny extra. We thank you so much for your help in producing Homesteady.